Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be trying something that I've wanted to use for a while. This iridescent gold watercolor ground by Daniel Smith. Watercolor grounds can do a couple different things, but their main purpose is to essentially create a primer barrier on whatever surface you're painting to absorb the watercolor paint. At the same time, they offer different colors that tint your artwork so that you can paint on top and have a more harmonious painting. The iridescent gold, of course, will have a metallic quality as we paint the watercolor on top. Normally, I prime wooden panels, and it essentially gives it the same texture as a cold press paper. So I'm just going to do a couple swatches in my sketchbook, uh, thin and thick, to see how they come out. I'm very familiar with the transparent watercolor ground, but I've never tried the gold. So let's give it a whirl. After letting my swatches dry for 24 hours, I wet some watercolors and I'm going to be using a couple different supplies on top just to see how these colors react over top of the gold. For the most part, they're very transparent watercolors, so we're going to see some beautiful golden effects. At this point, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to paint yet, but I was really looking forward to using these vivid colors on top of the gold. And um, it's funny because I end up doing something that's very much in the brown tones. After mixing these colors and seeing the browns on top of the gold, it was just such a beautiful combination that I went that direction. And you'll see in the swatches that how you apply the gold really does make a big difference. If you do a couple coats, you're going to get a really thick, rich gold primer. And if you do a very thin coat, it'll just be subtle. For this piece, I'm going to use a wooden birch panel. And for the watercolor ground, you're definitely going to need to apply two coats because it's quite absorbent. So it'll really soak up that first coat and you'll need to definitely put on a second after 24 hours. This watercolor ground is made to go on a plethora of different surfaces, but if it's absorbent at all, you don't need to sand it first. And during the video, it was quite hard to capture the golden quality of the iridescent ground, so I brought it outside. Hopefully you guys can see that shimmer a little bit better than in my studio. Next, I transferred my drawing onto the panel using white transfer paper. My favorite is by Sorel. Next, I started with just a couple thin layers. It's very important to let the layers dry underneath each other, otherwise you can lift them up with the next layer. So while I was waiting for that first layer to dry, I went in there with some frisket and applied a lace pattern to the shirt area. And I'm going to leave that gold underneath, so when I pick up the frisket, it'll just be that iridescent gold. So I began plugging in even more thin layers on top of each other, just trying to build everything up. But I quickly realized that for the skin, I was definitely going to have to go more opaque. Um, otherwise, I was just going to be fighting the gold. And I want the gold to complement the skin. I don't want it to be like the overwhelming uh, first thing that people see. So I added a little bit of acrylic gouache into the highlight areas, and it allowed me to go much more bold with all of my shadow areas. So once I had those stronger values in place, I kind of jumped around my painting and began building it up quite a bit more. Working on the gold was kind of challenging because Depending on what time of day it was, the lighting changed, and therefore the gold reflected differently. Also, depending on where I was sitting and where the panel was on my desk, the gold reflected towards me in a different way. So I would draw part of the face and I'd be happy with it, and then I would move the panel a little bit and I would see more gold and I would be like, no, I thought I fixed that area. And so it was kind of a back and forth challenge. I think that it has a really beautiful glowing quality about it, which of course it would. But I think if I was going to use it again, I would probably use it for something like a landscape 
where you don't have to fight with something like skin tones, especially because it's predominantly a yellow color. So I had to tint a lot of my skin tones more in that kind of um, purple-blue value just to cancel out the yellow a little bit. And as far as the background goes, I decided to plug in a black color to kind of take down some of that gold because it was just very overwhelmingly yellow, very reflective. I think it was beautiful with a gold background, but I think that the black kind of adds a darkness to it. And that extra contrast was very complementary to the gold. Not only that, it really brought out all those subtle areas of gold that you can see within the flowers and parts of the skin. I think that was the most beautiful part of working with the gold was deciding how much to cover and how much to leave. One thing that I did want to do as I was painting was add more gold back into certain areas that I covered up too much, which is really awesome because this worked well. I just used the gold ground with a brush and a little bit of water and just plugged it back into the hair in a couple spots and I think you're able to see more gold throughout because of it. So that was kind of a fun trick. Overall, I think that this was a really fun thing to work with. It's definitely completely different than painting on a white piece of paper or even on um, just a wooden grain background like I'm used to. So I'll definitely be doing this again, but I think maybe I will paint with gouache or something that has a little bit more opacity that I can thin down to make transparent so that I'm able to be a little bit more intentional with where and how much I'm building up my values. And that way I think I'll also be able to avoid some of the different sheens that I have going on, like the colored pencils look a little bit different than the paint, etc. And yeah, I brought it outside for you guys too, because again, this painting looks totally different in different lights. I hope that this little review helped you in some way, and I hope that you have a wonderful week. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you.